Hello everybody, I'm Christopher from Gis China Germany. Today with a review of the Colorfly G708 tablet PC. You might not know the brand Colorfly. It's actually made by the company Colorful. You can visit their website at www.colorful.cn. They are mostly a manufacturer of high-end MP3 players and graphics cards, but also do some tablets. And even though tablets aren't their main business, they created a pretty amazing tablet PC with the G708. Eight. Um, it's a low-cost tablet PC costing only 72 euros or a bit above 80 bucks and what you get for this money is pretty insane so let me just show you that so the Colorfly G708 comes in this box which is lo looking rather nice I think at least that's my opinion for such a cheap tablet that's pretty neat we have the Colorfly tablet imprint on the top the slogan of the company Colorfly your life made in China and a link to the website of the company you can slide the black box inside out um, here in this area and inside you will find the tablet PC a little envelope containing a warranty card along with a quality check stamp a EU um, wall charger with two amperes um, that came with the tablet in my case and a flat black micro USB cable so that's about the accessories there isn't so much in there but I think that's totally acceptable at this price level um, there also has been a protective film applied onto the tablet but I have removed that immediately because I didn't like the texture of it Having a look at the design of the Colorfly G708, you probably notice immediately that this one is completely white on the front. We have a glass panel on here, which really is glass, not plastic or anything. And it also seems to be pretty scratch proof as I didn't manage to get any scratches on it yet even though I've removed the cover from it. And as you can see immediately, we even have a phone call speaker on here. So actually you can do phone calls with this tablet as this one does support 2G and 3G networks. Else we find a front camera with 0.3 megapixels on here and sensors for proximity and light. And on the bottom below the screen, you see another Colorfly imprint. Look, imprint. Looking at the sides, you immediately notice that we have a blue frame going on here and that might look a little childish to you, but well I like it um, I say don't be so serious why not have something like this it's something different in my opinion looking around this frame we find on the bottom a voice microphone for phone calls on the right side a volume rocker and a on off switch and on the top we find a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and a micro usb port which does surprisingly support otg which again is something outstanding at this price level in my opinion now let's have a look at the rear and here we see white ones again we have a camera here with three megapixels we have a media speaker the colorfly logo and also some pattern on here which does look pretty neat in my opinion and also add some grip to the rear which would be pretty slippery because of the polycarbonate that's been used here you also can take off this upper cover here which will give you access to the micro sd and micro sim card slot of the tablet pc all in all i don't really have to complain anything about the build quality of this tablet it's amazingly well built for this price again just a little bit above 80 bucks and in my opinion um, they couldn't do that any better and I'm really surprised how well this thing has been made um, there are no clattering noise anything the buttons fit perfectly or sit perfectly fine in to the location and the only thing I noticed is that you can pull the rear a little bit inwards which will give you a little bit creaky noises but not much it's just a tiny bit and um, nothing really disturbing so let me fire the tablet up and while this thing is booting let me tell you a little bit about the specs of this device um, at 80 bucks you wouldn't expect much but actually there are quite some specs in there we have a mt6 Flip MT6592M octa-core processor clocked at 1.4 GHz with a Meili 540 MP GPU, which actually is quite a good SLC for this price range. It's nothing compared to the new 64-bit chips by MediaTek, but it's totally okay at this price range and still perfectly fine for surfing the web and even some decent games. Else we have 1 GB of RAM inside of there, 8 GB of internal memory, as I said a 1.2 megapixel or 1.3 megapixel front camera, a 2 megapixel rear camera, 2G and 3G support and 
Well, even GPS is supported here, OTG is there, um, you can pl plug in microSD cards. Um, we also have a 3000 milliamps battery, which actually does, does last quite long and um, it also does support su support fast charging which is pretty outstanding again at this price level i've never seen a device supporting fast charging um, at such a low price and that's definitely a plus again so that being said let's switch the tablet on again and have a look at the screen well obviously enough um, you cannot expect that much um, from the screen at this price level we have a seven inch panel going on here with a resolution of 1280 by 800 pixels and of of course that results in a pretty low pixel density um, at this screen size but let me tell you all this pixel fetish going on these days um, doesn't make much sense to me actually you get used to um, the low pixel density very quickly if you're used to higher pixel density screens and you won't notice it anymore after a while um, if you use the tablet normally within a normal distance between the screen and your eyes you won't see any pixels at all you really have to come closer to the screen as you can probably see here um, regarding the contrast, I am not so satisfied. It's, it, it's a pretty low contrast here, which results in the colors being a little, looking a little faded out or something. Um, it's something I can live with, though. At this price level, you can't expect a perfect screen. Else, I'm really satisfied with it. It's pretty bright, and which enables it to you to use it outdoors um, under sunlight. Um, for example, if you use it as a navigation system or something. Um, that would be pretty important and it does work just well because the brightness is very high and the viewing angles are also nothing to complain about at this price level in my opinion of course we have, don't have an OGS display here um, but you still can see everything pretty fine um, so the screen is not bad but also not um, high-end as you would expect so from the screen we immediately move on to system performance and the firmware in general and I have to say that I was pretty surprised by the performance of this tablet. Um, it's been a while since I've used a MT6592 device um, the last time um, but I think this SLC is still capable of handling um, most tasks you would do with such a low-cost tablet. Let me just demonstrate you the UI. As you can see it's running very smooth. Um, there are no legs. Let me just open up the settings um, and you will see again. Um, it's very smooth. You don't have to wait for anything here. Um, it's even capable of playing some um, 3D games like Dead Trigger 2 at um, medium settings and well so you still can do gaming with it you just can play high-end games like for example Modern Combat 5. Well, let's have a look at some benchmarks I've run on this device. Um, where did I place it? Um, here. Um, so first the Antutu benchmark um, 27,996 points I think that's nothing bad for a 80 bucks tablet. Um, let's also have a look at the Willemo benchmark. And here you see we've got pretty high scores again. 1868 points in the browser benchmark with the Google Chrome browser and in the multi-core test reached 1344 points, which isn't bad at all again. So let's have a look at the operating system itself. We are running Android 4.4.2 KitKat on here. So that's pretty much up to date in my opinion. And well, it comes with a lever launcher out of the box, which I kicked out because it's a little buggy. I installed my own launcher here and I think that's even looking a little more nice um, than the original launcher. Um, else, the operating system has been pretty much left untouched. The only thing they changed and that I don't like at all is that they placed a button to do screenshots on the soft key bar here on the bottom. Um, it happens numerous times for me that I want to hit the multitasking button or app overview button and hit the screenshot button by accident and that's extremely annoying. I would have wished that they have thrown that out of here and somewhere into the quick settings for example like all winner does that with their firmware for the AADT for example. Another thing I don't like about the operating system is that we have an 8 GB of internal memory here but can't use that all for applications. We actually just have one GB of memory available for applications which could, which could become an issue if you want to use this tablet for mid-range gaming. Um, let me just show you. I've installed the Antutu benchmark Asphalt 8 on this tablet. 
that trigger two Facebook application, here Maps, um, News Republic, Skype, Spotify, Subway Surfer, and Zombie Wood, uh, Microsoft Word is installed as well. So that's my my large applications, and as you can see, the memory is pretty much filled up right now, and I can't install um, any more large apps now even though I've plugged in a 32 GB micro SD card simply because you can't move the role applications to the micro SD card but just parts of them. Um, so that's a big downside. It might not be an issue for someone who's looking for a low cost tablet who isn't doing much with it anyway. If you just use normal applications, no games, it will be perfectly fine. But if you use um, some games on there, you will run out of memory pretty quickly. And that's something I don't like that much. Um, well, Thing of taste, thing of opinion, that's for the operating system and performance. Next I want to talk with you about audio quality and actually there isn't much to say because I have been rather disappointed. Um, as I said, Colorfly or Colorful are manufacturing high-end audio players and you would expect this tablet to feature a pretty good audio quality as they have some experience in, the, in this um, market. Um, but actually it's not. Um, I guess there are some software bug going on because um, this sounds like um, music on the telephone. Um, it's just uh, not something you would like to listen to music with and that applies to both the internal media speaker and also the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Um, through Bluetooth speakers it's a little bit better but it still doesn't sound perfect. Um, well, as I said, I think there's some software bug going on and I hope they will fix that with OTA updates. They do OTA updates. I already received two OTA updates during the review process, which is a pro in my opinion. From multimedia audio quality, we are moving on to reception quality and this is where the tablet pretty much performs outstandingly well. As you can see right now, I'm connected to a 2G network, GSM network right now with full signal strength. And if I move to 3G, you see right now it got one 3G signal. You see that we only have one bar here. Um, that's not surprising because in this room, um, the 3G access is very limited and even high-end phones mostly only get two or three bars. Um, in general, this tablet is mostly one bar behind a high-end device. So it's somewhere in the mid-range, a perfect reception quality but still perfectly usable for surfing the internet on the go and you won't have any issues most of the time. I also did test phone calls um, and I was pretty surprised by the quality of them. They are perfectly clear. You can understand uh, your interlocutor pretty well and in the reverse order as well. The only downside is that it sounds a that the volume is pretty low and um, that could be a little higher but else um, voice quality during telephony is pretty fine. Next let's talk about Wi-Fi reception quality and here um, I didn't have any issues at all. Um, usually when I move through the wall house I will have to connect to my other router that I have downstairs um, sometimes because I will lose the connection to the router I have up here in this floor. Um, this isn't surprisingly the case here. I can move through the wall house without losing connection to this router. The router actually is one wall behind of me right now and as you can see I have full signal strength here. We can also have a look at the router that is downstairs, one floor below me. me. That's the Linksys router here and you see we have four bars for this router and sorry three bars for this router and I think that's totally fine and totally acceptable and a very good um, reception quality in my opinion. Um, what it's totally blown away me um, though is the GPS reception quality of this tablet PC. Now um, we are used to the older MediaTek chipsets not performing that well when it comes to GPS and that's not only because it doesn't support GLONASS and all that stuff but just GPS and HGPS but just um, because it needs a good antenna to work and that's something most Chinese companies or manufacturers fail to do. Um, now with this tablet I went outside for the GPS test and expected not to receive any signal at all as I have uh, experienced it numerous times with such cheap Chinese devices. But actually I've got a fix and it was quick. Just within a few seconds I got a fix for 8 satellites as you can see here, accuracy 2 meters and as you can see all satellites are green except 2 and that means we have a very high signal strength going on here. And I can even get a cold fix inside the house and that's a 
that is pretty outstanding, I think, and makes this device not only usable as a tablet, but as a navigation system as well. I tested that, I didn't have any problems with that, um, and did some half an hour of navigation or so with um, here maps. As you can see, I've installed that here. And it did just work like a charm, and well, I was very satisfied with that. Regarding the camera, I have to say, that of course you can't expect um, that much again from it. Um, we only have two megapixels on here and we don't even have an audio focus going on here and at this price level, well, you won't complain about, about a bad camera. So let me tell you, the camera is usable for quick snapshots, quick videos, but it's nothing you would want to take serious pictures with. The quality is just too low. Um, there's a lack of details, they are not very sharp and there also is a lot of noise going on. The colors are pretty much okay, but all the other stuff isn't. So it's only a snapshot camera and nothing more. And okay, it's also usable for video chats and so on. Now another thing that's extremely important when it comes to Chinese tablet PCs and tablet PCs in general, of course, is the battery life. And well, I tell you, this battery life is outstanding. <laughs> now you might ask, what? What's happened with this guy? Um, this tablet only has 3000 milliamps and the MT6592 SoC isn't known for its power efficiency. Well, yes, it is, um, but um, this tablet is a perfect proof for the matter of fact that it doesn't only need a large capacity, large battery capacity, but also lots of optimizations for the software and the hardware to be power efficient. Um, let me just show you one thing. I did run the PC mark battery benchmark on this tablet and this is actually testing the battery um, like in real life. It's doing real life tasks um, non-stop until the battery hits 20%. So I started that at 100% battery charge and it stopped at 20% and from 100% to 20% it took 7 hours and 58 minutes. That's screen on time guys at about 30 to 40% of brightness, screen brightness. That's amazing. That's simply amazing. And I was really blown away by this battery life. If I would suck the battery empty to 0% or 5% or something, we probably would have hit nine hours of battery life here, nine hours of screen on time. And that's really amazing. Wi-Fi was active, 3G was active, and it did just work that long. And for me, um, one charge of the battery lasts for about two days if I use the tablet on, um, for my work and that's pretty outstanding I think. And take in the fact that we are fast charging here, it only takes just a little over one hour to fully recharge the battery with a 2 ampere power supply and that's pretty outstanding as well. Oh, again, so you notice your tablet is empty, you plug it in, after just a bit above one hour it will be recharged again and you're good to go for two more days. That's simply amazing and I really really love that at this tablet about this tablet and of course also at this price level this is simply outstanding i can't say it often enough okay guys we hit the final conclusion part what to say about the colorflight g708 well i did dub this device a little bit when i got it because i didn't expect much from it um at 80 bucks i was like well this can't be of a good quality featuring those specs maybe there are some fake specs even inside and the build quality can't be good, but it was totally proven wrong. The build quality is good, the design is pretty much okay, the screen is acceptable, the performance is, t is amazing, let's face it, um, at this price level, um, even though the SoC is not the newest one. Okay, the 1GB of RAM are a downside, but it's still enough for doing internet surfing, running two apps at a time. Um, for things you do with a budget tablet, that's still totally okay in my opinion. So the only real downsides um, I noticed with this tablet are the low app memory, but that can be fixed with a custom ROM, I think. And of course also the bad audio quality, but everything else is working just fine. Camera, okay. Battery life, outstanding. Um, reception quality is okay. And octa-core, 3G access at such a low price. It's simply amazing. Let's face that. So. Next, you will see a performance demo of the Colorfly Chief 708. And I already say bye. Thanks for watching. If you like what we are doing at Gestrana Germany, make sure to follow us on all social networks and of course here on YouTube. Again, thanks for watching. 
and see you next time over and out.